What's up comic book fans? It's time for another sorting video. This is by far our most requested video right now and since I love you guys so much I'm going to sort the Avengers into Hogwarts houses. The members I will be sorting are Captain America, Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. The reason I'm not sorting the founding members is because thanks to the Marvel Cinematic Universe this group is by far the most popular group of Avengers. And down the line, we can sort other prominent members like Spider-Man, Vision, Black Panther, Ant-Man, and so on. If you'd like an in-depth look at my sorting methods, check out my Justice League sorting video. There, I go over every house in more detail, but for this video, we'll just go over what each house values the most. Let's start with the Gryffindor values. Bravery, nerve, Chivalry, Courage, and Daring. The Hufflepuff values are Dedication, Hard Work, Fair Play, Patience, Kindness, Tolerance, Loyalty, and Being Unafraid of Toil. The Ravenclaw values are Intelligence, Wit, Wisdom, Creativity, Originality, Individuality, and Acceptance. And finally, the Slytherin values are Resourcefulness, Cunning, Ambition, Self-Preservation, and fraternity. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin with everyone's favorite purple archer, Hawkeye. Clint Barton had a rough childhood, to say the least. He grew up in an abusive household with his brother Barney. Their father was a drunk and would often beat the two young boys, but his drinking eventually caught up with him and he died in a car accident alongside Clint's mother. After their death, the brothers were sent in and out of foster homes until they finally ran away to join the circus. While a member of the circus, Clint was trained by the original swordsman and by Trickshot. He eventually adapted his archery skills to become a star carnival attraction, a master archer called Hawkeye, otherwise known as the world's greatest marksman. While at the circus, he witnessed Iron Man in action, and Barton was inspired and attempted to emulate Tony Stark by donning a colorful costume and employing his archery skills to fight crime. However, during his first public appearance, Hawkeye was mistaken for a thief by the police. Black Widow eventually enlisted him as her partner, and they clashed with Iron Man on several occasions. In the past, Clint Barton was a man that lived for the thrill of the adventure. He could never see himself settling down and enjoying retirement. He was arrogant and stubborn, always wanting to be the leader of any group he was a part of, unless a better leader was apparent to him, which was not often. Pre-modern Hawkeye is a mix between Slytherin and Gryffindor, but I'm more interested in modern Hawkeye. His addition to the MCU Avengers and Matt Fraction's legendary run on Hawkeye have remodeled the character from a stereotypical cocky hotshot to something more real. In Matt Fraction's run, Hawkeye is very often a funny character, throwing out jokes and quipping with others, but the arc called The Tape takes the time to round out the character. It makes him less of a joke factory and more relatable and human. Matt Fraction and Joss Whedon took Hawkeye from a middle-of-the-road everyday superhero and made him one of the more relatable characters out there. He now cares for his friends immensely. He'd do anything for them. He even left his retirement in the Civil War film because his close friends just asked him to. The Hawkeye of the past would have never settled down in the first place. Modern Hawkeye has all the great attributes of Hufflepuff. He's dedicated to his work and his loved ones. He's unwaveringly loyal, he's patient, kind, and he's obviously hardworking. You don't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with mutants, superpowered beings, and gods as a human if you didn't work extremely hard to get there. Next up, let's talk about one of Clint's closest friends, Natasha Romanova, aka Black Widow. She was born around 1928 and was apparently orphaned as a child when she became trapped in a burning building and was eventually rescued by a Soviet soldier. And to save that same soldier's life, she accepted a place in the Soviet government's covert Red Room facility. 
While there, she was bio and psychotechnologically enhanced, granting her an unusually long lifespan and a prolonged youthful appearance. She became one of the special agents known as the Black Widow. Natasha would soon run into Hawkeye, who, like I said earlier, was a wanted man by mistake. The two became attracted to each other, which caused the KGB to question her loyalty to Russia. So she was kidnapped and brainwashed yet again and told to attack the Avengers. But she was able to free herself from the brainwashing and eventually became an ally of the Avengers instead. And she would often aid them, but she did not join the team. Natasha later decided to join S.H.I.E.L.D. to be their double agent and operative against the KGB. Black Widow shares qualities with both Ravenclaw and Slytherin, but she's overwhelmingly Slytherin. Her cunning, resourcefulness, ambition, and self-preservation are some of her most defining traits. While you may think Natasha is a lone wolf and therefore would be excluded from Slytherin because she doesn't value fraternity, well, you'd be wrong. Most of her life, Black Widow has been part of teams that share common goals. From her very early life being close with Wolverine, to her time with Hawkeye, to the Avengers, to S.H.I.E.L.D., to the Champions. Black Widow may seem cold and distant, but she needs a support group around her, and she thrives in those situations. Next up, let's talk about Bruce Banner and the Hulk. This one was a bit tricky, so I enlisted the help of a good friend of the channel and Hulk expert, Chris Bird. And we were finally able to sort the Incredible Hulk and Bruce Banner, who we agree should be sorted separately. So let's start with Bruce. After college, Bruce began to work with the military in New Mexico under the command of General Thunderbolt Ross, who was overseeing the testing of Bruce's Gamma Bomb. On the day of the bomb's scheduled detonation, Banner saw someone in the testing area, and hoping to rescue this person, Banner went into the area, and this resulted in him being caught in the explosion and being exposed to gamma radiation. Not long after this, Bruce transformed for the first time into what the military called the Hulk. So first of all, let's sort Bruce and go over his defining traits. Bruce is obviously extremely intelligent. He's right up there with some of the smartest people in the Marvel Universe. According to Marvel's official wiki, both Tony Stark and Bruce Banner rate a 6 out of 7 on the intelligence scale, as do two characters most often cited as the smartest on the planet, Reed Richards and Doctor Doom. But Bruce is also very creative. He often creates solutions to many problems that not even Tony Stark or Reed Richards were able to come up with. But his most defining trait doesn't have much to do with his brains, but rather his heart. After years of feeling like he was trapped with his alter ego, he is finally able to accept the Hulk, and this is the main reason why I believe Bruce is a Ravenclaw. So where does this leave the Hulk? I originally thought Gryffindor, but was persuaded by our Hulk expert to take a closer look into the Hulk's history. While recently it has become apparent that Hulk and Bruce are both parts of the same person, Hulk represents a radically different part of Bruce's psyche. The reason that I was given why Hulk isn't Gryffindor is he doesn't act brave or chivalrous for the sake of it or because it's right, but because he genuinely has nothing to fear. Hulk is the strongest there is. He's fiercely loyal to his friends. Hulk has journeyed as far as Olympus to beg the gods for help to save the souls of his friends when punching just couldn't do it. But on the other side, he also strives to be left alone. Now, you may be thinking, okay, he's loyal, but what about all the other traits of Hufflepuff? Isn't he just a monster at the end of the day? Well, yeah, to his enemies, he is a monster. He has no patience for them. He has no tolerance for them. He has no love for them. But when it comes to the close ones in his life, Hulk is the polar opposite, which just exemplifies his dedication and his loyalty. Hulk, without a doubt, is a Hufflepuff. From a monster to a god, let's talk about Thor. 
Thor is the son of Odin and the elder goddess Gaia, who is the living embodiment of Earth itself. As the Asgardian god of thunder, Thor commands thunder, the lightning, and the wind, which are all elements of the storm, with his hammer, Mjolnir, which was formed from the legendary, indestructible Asgardian metal, Uru. From a young age, Thor was arrogant beyond belief. He believed no evil could defeat him, that he was perfect in every sense of the word. But his father saw through this and believed that he needed to be taught a lesson and the meaning of humility. To accomplish this, Odin put Thor's mind and soul into the body of a handicapped mortal human named Dr. Donald Blake. And he also erased Thor's memory, so he had no recollection of his actual godly identity. And eventually, the two identities merge, and Thor is able to alternate between the two. He eventually fell in love with a woman named Jane Foster and became one of Earth's mightiest heroes. And when I say mighty, I mean mighty. He's matched the power of the Hulk, which in theory should be limitless. He's thrown worlds out of orbit. He's punched a tear in reality so hard that it closed. Thor uses his power to fight for the weak as a valiant hero. There's a reason why he's worthy of Mjolnir. Thor is a textbook Gryffindor. The final two heroes are the big two and probably the most popular of the Avengers, Captain America and Iron Man. But let's start with Captain America. Most of you know the story, super soldier who punched Nazis in the face regularly during World War II. He was eventually frozen solid for decades before finally returning to the world as Captain America yet again. So let me set the scene in Hogwarts for you. We're in the Great Hall. All of our other members have been sorted, leaving just a young Steve Rogers and a young Tony Stark. They call Steve's name and he begins to stand up, but before he can begin to even walk up to the stage, the sorting hat yells out, Gryffindor! The entire hall erupts in applause as Steve sits back down. There's an argument that could be made for Captain America to be a Hufflepuff, but it just doesn't hold water. Steve has always been a fighter his entire life. He wanted to serve his country so badly that he lied time and time again just for the chance to join the fight against the ultimate evil. He was chosen to be a super soldier not because of his strength, which he didn't have any. He was chosen because he had the heart of a lion never afraid to stand up for the little guy and do what's right. He's so righteous that he was willing to literally go to war with his closest friends over what he believed was the right thing to do. He and Superman share these qualities in spades. They are pillars of what it means to be a hero. And if any house is heroic, it's Gryffindor. They exemplify what it means to be courageous, to be brave, to be the ones always willing to do the right thing, even when it's the unpopular thing. Steve would be very out of place in any of the other three houses. Finally, we've reached the end with, in my opinion, the most popular Avenger of the group, Tony Stark, the Iron Man. Anthony Edward Stark was born in Long Island, New York to Howard and Marie Stark, and when Tony was just seven, he was sent to a boarding school. And during his time at this boarding school, he found people difficult to relate to. This was when he became fascinated by machines, and by the age of 15, Tony had enrolled in MIT. He graduated at the top of his class at age 19 with double masters in physics and engineering. At the age of 21, his parents were tragically killed in a car accident. Afterwards, Tony inherited Stark Industries, a mega conglomerate that manufactured weapons for the United States military. During the war in Afghanistan, Stark was testing new technology for the military when he was injured by his own landmine that lodged shrapnel near his heart. 
Tony was then captured by a local warlord and forced under the threat of death to create a doomsday weapon for him. The shrapnel was going to enter his heart and kill him, but before that happened, he created an arc reactor which kept the shrapnel away. And instead of building the doomsday machine for the warlord, Tony built a suit of armor to help himself escape captivity. Thus, Iron Man was born. Iron Man is by far the most charismatic of the Avengers, while many heroes have a persona that's a bit of a blank slate, Iron Man oozes personality from every pore. As Iron Man or his alter ego Tony Stark, he loves the spotlight and is perfectly at home talking in front of large groups of people. And honestly, he wasn't easy for me to sort and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you disagree with my final decision. If he were to be sorted, I believe there would be a hat stall that would last hours or even days. The hat would have a difficult time deciding between Ravenclaw or Slytherin. Let's take a look at the values for both, and let's start with Ravenclaw. Intelligence, yes. He's in the top three smartest Marvel characters alive, so that's a check. Wit, triple check. He's one of the wittiest characters in pop culture, let alone Marvel Comics. Wisdom, uh, well, not so much. Uh, he often makes unwise decisions because of his arrogance, so that's one thing that I would knock him down for in Ravenclaw. Creativity, obviously a big yes here. Originality, no question. Individuality, also a big check. And finally, acceptance. I'd say he struggles with this, uh, but at times can be very accepting. So that one's kind of a 50-50. Now let's look at Slytherin. Resourcefulness, I'll let this quote from Iron Man explain this one. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. So yeah, Tony is amongst the most resourceful heroes in Marvel Comics. Cunning, he uses his intelligence and wit to be very, very cunning, which often blurs the line between hero and villain. He uses his cunning against his friends as well as his enemies. Ambition, take one look at Stark Industries and what it has transformed into, as well as his involvement in founding multiple superhero teams and organizations, including the Avengers, and you will see that he's super ambitious. Next, self-preservation, one of his most defining traits. C, arc reactor. And finally, fraternity. This is his least Slytherin trait in my opinion, but like I said, he's gone out of his way to establish superhero teams and sees the need for them, even if he'd like to be a solo act more often than not. In the end, I think Tony would be the best fit for Slytherin, or Slytherin would be the best fit for Tony, however you want to say that. But I can see if a lot of you think he should be in Ravenclaw, so let me know what you think Tony would be better suited for down in the comments. So this video is way longer than I thought it was going to be, but thanks to everybody who stuck it out to the end. Let me know what you thought of my sorting of the Avengers. Let me know what house you're in. I'd love to talk to you guys down in the comments. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Remember to like and subscribe if you did like this video. And remember the motto, it's comics over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.